right, before we get into all that madness, <laughs> I'm going to throw it over to you, Miss Texas Football Tonight analyst, as we unveil the Week 6 Texas Football Tonight Spotlight Games. Yes, we are back. Uh, like we said, this one, the the depth of this week, not necessarily there, but Mm-mm. the high-end talent mm-hmm. of some of these games is definitely there. Mm-hmm. We start off Thursday night, uh, two different games. Katie Maid Creek and Katie Tompkins will definitely be talking about that one potentially, but the one that we will for sure, for sure be focusing on is uh, District 16 6A matchup, likely for the district championship between mm-hmm. Maximum Bears of Bridgeland Maximum and... Maximum Bears! Yes, correct. And Connor Wigman's hometown. Undefeated uh, Cypress Springs. I haven't said that in a... No. Wait. Yes, I said that correctly. They have not lost a game. That is my point. Yeah, no, no kidding. And I was going to say, I think uh, Tommy Arsh is on the call for this one, right? Oh, that rocks. That um, wouldn't surprise me if let he me, was. No, it's, it's not. It's Mr. Trevor Bullard himself mm. will be on the call for this one. Yeah, T-Pup called that doesn't ISO make any on sense. that one. That doesn't make any sense. Tommy went to Bridgeland. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And that's a big game for him. Okay, whatever. Yeah, okay. very, very interested to see um, how this one shapes out. The funny thing about Bridgeland, they're still running a two-quarterback system. So they've got Jet Lewis and Tyler Beagle out there. Um, according to – was heard from Step, it sounds like they each get two series in the first half, and then they just kind of decide from there. But it's working. I mean, they – That's crazy because it, like – I mean, especially at the college level, it just that doesn't typically work. Yeah. So interested to see that. The the big test here is going to be Cy Springs has a lot of speed and talent at the skill spots. So is Bridgeland able to stop that? I think that mm-hmm. Bridgeland is very big in the trenches. They're really good at that. I think this will be one of the best defense that, defenses that Cy Springs has gone up against. Um, but very interested in that one. 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night from Cypher FCU Stadium. Trevor Bullard on the call. So some Thursday night action, but moving on into Friday. And here is where we just are going to start off with the strongest game of the week, the best game of the week. It is, of course, 23-6A, the District of Doom down in the greater Houston area, Humble Atascacita taking on uh, Humble Summer Creek. So this one at Turner Stadium, 7 o'clock. Michael Silver's on the call. Should be an incredible matchup there. This is this is box office stuff. This is why yep. you tune in. This is a sold out crowd there at Turner Stadium, um, but we have it on Dave Campbell's Texan Live, so we're excited yeah. to uh, <laughs> spot like that one. But this is an Atascacita team that has probably one of the toughest non district slates. They have had the toughest schedule so far. Not only do they have a tough non district slate. They have a tough district slate, too, oh, to ridiculous. go through. Like, they've – I would love to see which – sorry, I'm kind of going off on no, a rant now. I would love to see which high school – and I'm sure we've got database of – or, like, a tracker of this. Which team – I guess you can do it for all div- divisions and classifications – has the toughest schedule? Uh, that was the fun fact of the week on Tep and Step. Do you remember who it was, B? It was – it was an odd – what was – Which one? The Texas High School Football Fun Fact – uh, on Tep and Step was the team with the toughest schedule. Matt Steps in the comments. He's probably screaming at me. Um, anyway, yes, we can He's find that out. At me. <laughs> it's got a task of seat has got to be up there. It's it definitely up there. Um, that being said, your eyes are going to go to Atascacita's offense versus Summer Creek defense. This is a Summer Creek defense that has not allowed a single point, point this year. A single point. Now, I don't think yes. that they've gone up against a team that has as electrifying of an offense as Atascacita with Carde Mack. Um, Tori Blaylock He's just incredible. decided to pop off for six touchdowns last week. Um, and they weren't, they weren't little bitty, like, oh, hand it to the running back and let him punch it in for two yards. These were 70 yard. Yeah. I, the highlights were so I read the highlights on, uh, mm-hmm. cause they played on Thursday night last week, but I've read the highlights on Texas football tonight and was like, well, we're just going to sit here and watch Tory Blaylock run for four minutes mm-hmm. because that's what he did. So this one is box office stuff. It's going to be exciting. Um, I think that if you're summer Creek, you want to keep the the ball out of the hands of those guys you have to um but it'll be it'll be interesting to see um all right moving on to the next one it is a battle in the dfw this one likely for another district Mm -hmm. championship we go to district three five a division one as the number one 
ranked uh, Ditton Ryan Raiders take on the second ranked Alito Bearcats. One versus two district game, a 122 game district winning streak on the line at Alito. Mm -hmm. It's weird not seeing Alito as number one. I, I'm not going to lie. When I was looking at my sheet here, I thought that that was a typo. And then I remembered, oh no, they, they lost to Denton Geyer. Geyer yeah, earlier in the year. Which again, that Very one is a, a 6A team. Yeah. They were on the road. Uh, they played them incredible. Yes. But I think that uh, this one is a this one is an interesting quarterback matchup. I think that Ryan Beard mm-hmm. from Alito has really grown up since what we've seen in that Denton Geyer game. Um, he seems to kind of has his feeding under him. Obviously, he's got Racing Guillory out on the edge, mm-hmm. which is a versatile weapon. There. Caden Finley, too, at wide C- receiver. Yep, Caden Finley. Um, so Alito is just fine on the offensive side of the ball, and their defense has shaped up to be pretty good, mm-hmm. too. Uh, the Ryan quarterback, whose name is escaping me. Oh, uh, uh, Quinn Hennigan. There is another Hennigan. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Interested to see what what he ends up doing. But, you know, this is a team. These are two teams coming off of huge wins last week, just teams that they were way better than. This will be the true test, what I think will decide that District 3 title. And, of course, the, the Alito district streak that we keep talking about. Uh, Tepper threw it out there, but 6,209 days since they lost. A- <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Three presidential elections? Yeah, George Bush was yeah, in office. George Bush. <laughs> George Bush. Uh, yeah, that's actually insane. That's a crazy. So, yeah, I think both teams are really good up front. It's going to come down to which defense can get a stop in the latter half of the mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. Um, so excited for... That one. Moving on now to another DFW matchup. This one in District 4 of 5A Division 2. The Melissa Cardinals traveling over to take on the Leopards of Lovejoy over there in Lucas. This one's a 7-30 kick. Um, Melissa's defense going up against a Lovejoy offense that seems to have found its footing after last week. Mm -hmm. Um, They just absolutely – who did they play? They destroyed someone last week. Anna? Um, or, or, I mean, not uh, Melissa or Lovejoy. Oh, Lovejoy. Okay, so they didn't destroy Anna, but it was a 66-62 to 62 win for uh, for Lovejoy last week. And so that was an offense that they – oh, they destroyed Frisco Liberty. Frisco That's Li- what it was. Because uh, Anna and Melissa played last week. It was our spotlight game. Correct. Um, so they dropped the first one to Lubbock Cooper. Everybody's eyes start to turn. Then they drop one at Highland Park, and it's like, okay, that's that's a team that we expected to be a pretty close game. We'll just – we didn't know exactly what the Scots looked like this year. I assumed it was pretty good. Um, definitely found their footing against Frisco Liberty, and then in the offense is just – Humming last week in a thriller against Anna, um, their quarterback uh, Jacob Jank, no Janik, um, is off to 962 yards, 16 touchdowns rushing. Um, he he's really dual threat. He's actually leading Lovejoy right now with 67 yards per like of rushing per game. Wow! So interested to see how that pairs up against a Melissa defense. That has looked really good. So they mm-hmm. were the story all night um, last week. They forced turnovers on Anna's final three possessions of the game, which is what got them back into that game. Um, so the Melissa defense and those big nasties up front going up against a Lovejoy squad that wants to get you out to the edge and wants to air it out will be very interesting. This will be a big test for Melissa because I'm looking at their schedule and they lost the first one against an Arkansas team. Mm-hmm. And then they've played three Frisco schools that are just not very good, and no. they haven't been historically. And then an Anna team that they're a good team, but they moved up from 4A Division One last year. Mm-hmm. So I think this is a going to be a very, very good test yep. for Melissa. I'll be interested to see how this turns out. Moving on now to a cross-regional matchup in District 10-6A, the Rockwall Yellow Jackets taking on the Longview Lobos out there in Lobo Stadium. Um, This is one that you've got to think will be potentially for a district championship. I mean, Forney might have something to say about that, although they look a little bit down from last year. Rockwall Heath, of course, always has a conversation um, under the direction of Rodney Webb. But I don't know what to make of Longview. I know. I still, to this point, don't know what to make of Longview. I think that that loss to South Oak Cliff was a bad one. Mm-hmm. You're going up against a South Oak Cliff squad that had been put through the mud week after week. They're going up against incredibly talented competition. They go to Lobo Stadium and end up pulling out a squeaker. You cannot let 
those games fall. And they won the first game against Lufkin, which I think Lufkin's a pretty good team, seven mm-hmm. to three. Um, but also, you have to remember this is a team that is moving up from Class Five A, mm-hmm. and now they're playing in a much tougher district. Um, there, so yeah, I guess that's a good point. You don't really know what to make of Longview. This is a tough district schedule. I mean, Rockwall, Forney's looking really good. Tyler Legacy with a great win over Rockwall Heath mm-hmm. last week. Even North Forney's really good. Like, this will be their first real test, I well, think, Well, and, and the other thing is, too, Rockwall's quarterback, well, Landon Locke, Cliff, obviously but. out for the season mm-hmm. with his, I believe it's a knee injury. Um, so what does Rockwall's offense look like? They're, they're high-flying, they're high-scoring, but can they still do that without a lock at the helm? That'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. So... If you're Longview, you want to get into that defensive battle and kind of keep it out of the explosive potential that Rockwall has. If you're Longview, you also have to find a way to score. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They have got to find a way to score against a Rockwall program that traditionally doesn't play a whole lot of defense. Mm -hmm. So um, that one should be exciting to see there. I bet bet this is pretty high scoring if I had to take a bet. I just don't know if Longview... They They can put up points. Yeah. They just can't. I feel like both of these teams are going to put up points. It's just going to be who's going to get the last stop. <laughs> yeah, that's, I don't think much defense. Yeah. Um, all right. Now, a big one, a big one in the 6A realm. We go from District 10 over to District 5. The number 10 ranked Coppell Cowboys taking on the 20th ranked Denton Geyer Wildcats. And here is another one that the quarterback matchup is fascinating. Coppell's mm-hmm. quarterback, Edward Griffin III, um, EG3, I believe, as he's been deemed now by his uh, his favorite Tepper. fan, Greg Tepper. You can hear him already. Uh, yeah, he's somewhere he's shouting, Coppell fight never die. Exactly. Um, he said in the pit. <laughs> of course he did. <laughs> he threw for 305 yards and five touchdowns uh, okay. last week to beat Hebron. And then on the other side of that, when you look at Geyer's they quarterback, Kevin Sperry, OU commit, coming in from Oklahoma. He has I, – I can't figure out what to make of him either. There are times where he looks really, really good. I think last week against Flower Mound, he looked great. There are times where we've seen him, and he hasn't looked. Just looks shaky. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if it's just miscommunication, if he's still trying to form that bond with his receivers. Um, but I think all eyes are going to the quarterbacks in this one. Mm-hmm. Very, very excited to see how this one turns out. Um, what yeah. Antonio Wiley has done with that Coppell oh, squad yeah. is just is just super impressive. And that district as a whole, we were talking about it on Texas Football Tonight the other night. That is one that we it, – it's almost anybody's game. You've got Flower Mound, Flower Mound Marcus, Denton Geyer, Coppell, all of them with – one loss on the season at max. Mm-hmm. Um, so this one very well. If if Coppell could pull this one off, I think they're the heavy favorites to win that district. Right, right. If Geyer pulls it off, then I feel like the district opens up and you're looking at a lot of tie potentials. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That'd, that'd make it fun. Mm-hmm. So excited about that one. All right, staying in the 6A realm, again, a lot of the smaller schools off this week. Uh, we rounded all out with a District 15 6A matchup. Klein Kane taking on Magnolia. James Tritley and Trevor Bullard on the call from Bulldog Stadium down there. This one is uh, likely for the district championships, you would think. Let's see, what is Magnolia? Oh, well, hang on. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, Magnolia is three and one on the season Klein Kane at four and one Klein Kane we've seen a lot of this year mm-hmm. and they look to be that team to beat um so if Magnolia is going to try and sneak one this is this is going to be the week to do that so excited about that one so there you go our week six spotlight games for Dave Campbell's Texas football tonight we will of course be live on air it'll be myself Greg Tepper and Ishmael Johnson on at seven thirty. you can watch for free on Texan oh, Live, free. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you're watching the show right now. We will see you on Friday night.